Ja, beginne ich. Ich begrüße alle recht herzlich. Die brauche ich nicht vorstellen, wie der kennt die. Und dann schauen wir mal, gibt es Fragen vorab? Hören, verstehen Sie denn alle was? Okay, dann die Musik my name is Howard Chaikin, and for me, I mean, I, I drive a BMW, so all my all the cars I draw have these fabulous little tiny windows right here. Um, and I have absolutely no idea why I'm here, because I hate drawing cars. <laughs> I don't draw, what's that? I'm, I'm, do I need a microphone? Can you all hear me? Yes. You all care to hear what I have to say? Yes, yes. What a good guy, we need to get more lives, I'm serious. <laughs> and for me, for me, the real Batmobile is the Batmobile from 1940. Because, for me, two great design ideas in the world are Italian and German. I'm quite sure. And I, I, I mean, I, I, I made BMW customs for life. You laugh, and I'm serious. I, I mean, I, I drove a Z3. I drive a 328 now, because I can't afford a 5 or a 7. Um, but for me, what automobile design is about is streamlining. And in the 1920s, 30s, for the break in the 40s for the Second World War, uh, the Italians, the Germans, and some of the Dutch were masters of the concept of streamlining, the taking of organic shape and the implication of speed with line. And when I was a little boy, I was 60 years old, and yes, I look really good, okay? <laughs> um, but I am 60, this is what 60 looks like, and I am riding inside, so enjoy the moment. When I was a little boy, how old are you? I'm old. Okay. When I was your age, I collected comic books from the Second World War. I was a collector of Golden Age comics back when they were when they were, when you could afford them. And I became utterly and completely fascinated with the design of the 1930s. And 40s. I remain that way. And what I love most were the Batmobile. Now, the credits all read Bob Kane, but the truth is, they were drawn by Jerry Robinson. Jerry was a wonderful man, Queen's a wonderful man. And although it was called Gotham City, I knew it was really New York. So, the first Batmobile that I ever became really aware of was the 1940s Batmobile which was a, a Buick sedan that was BMW not um, that was all about curves and round lines. Okay? Following that basic idea. Because basically in those days the concept of speed was defined to a certain extent by airflow. Okay. Uh, to a profound degree, Hitler's designers adopted some of that, that, that Ford idea, the Ford airflow design, which is this For the first of the Volkswagens. People's car. I love that vehicle. Okay. And as I got 
is somebody going to get this when it's done? Does anybody want this? Yes. You have too much spare time, don't you? <laughs> All of you have too much spare time. But Batman was always my favorite comic book character. Because Batman was, was ostensibly, we could all be Batman should we choose to be. If we had a really bad day when we were 11, we could someday become Batman. Take, taking all that rage, all that anger, all that self-obsession, because we had a bad day when we were 11, to dress up, you know, put on a cape, work out a lot, spend our multiple millions of dollars on really cool stuff, and beat the living crap out of people we didn't know. I, if I were Batman, would not stop with people I didn't know. I'd go for the people I did know, because I had a mask on, and they wouldn't know it was me. But the, the, whole, the whole concept of Batman, of Bruce Wayne, spending his money on really cool stuff, you know, remains the absolute subtext of that. It's what it's about. You know, he's got his, his, his foolish belt on. You know, he's got his airplanes. You know. I, what I really want to do is the whirly bats. Who's old enough to remember the whirly bats? You're all young. You're all children. That's fantastic. And the whirly bats? You remember them? No. Oh, okay. This, this, is a, this is an automobile thing, so I can't really do helicopters. Can I do helicopters? Well, do you want to answer a question? Um, so, but for me, the Batmobile is defined by that 1940s idea. Questions, considerations, ideas, anybody? Questions, somebody? Somebody want to talk to me about this? Have a conversation? No? And then comes the 1950s. scale 
became the issue. Everything became about being. And the comics that were being written and drawn when I was a little boy featured these, these ideas, these huge ideas, these grotesque ideas. One of the connections that is rarely made anymore between Batman and its real sources, people always talk about Batman comes from Zorro, and Batman comes from the shadow. For me, Batman owes as much to Dick Tracy as it does to Zorro and the shadow. Because Dick Tracy was all about this profound grotesqueness. The villains of Batman, the Joker, the Riddler, the Penguin, these characters all have their, their, their source materials in mumbles, in, in, in pudding face, and just those, those grotesque characters of Chester Gould. And in retrospect, we realized that one of the reasons Batman looked the way it was, the way it did in its earliest stages, was not out of choice, but out of necessity, because Bob Kane was so terrible. He was a terrible artist. It wasn't until he found Jerry Robinson who could translate his ideas into something representable that the material became effective and good. The Batman that I grew up with as a reader as a kid was by Dick Spring, who was a far more grotesque artist than Jerry Robinson. And I love Dick Spring. To this day, I adore Dick Spring. Because Dick Spring's Batman's face was shaped like that. perfect geometric idea. <laughs> I love that drawing, right? Big spring. Okay? You're laughing. Why are you laughing? This isn't the funny part. The funny part's later. Because basically what, what Dick Sprang was doing was geometry. And he applied that geometry to the, to the design of his world and his machines. And what he did was, he took that geometry, as opposed to the, the say, the, 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 style, the Bauhaus and their Stiel style of the, of the 30s and 40s, who came from Holland to Germany to France to Italy to the States. Rather, he applied this grotesque geometry, which was completely homegrown, all the machinery as well. So, whereas that car in the 1940s had reflected speed through airflow, what the Batmobile of the 1950s represented was blunt power. It was all straight lines, except for this, the foolish dome of the cockpit and the back fin and the back and the rear end. It was this huge box geometric shape, reminiscent of the Lincoln Continental and the Cadillac of the 1950s. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Still, with that Batman cow catcher. And I've always believed that what the shape of this vehicle represented, as I said, was blunt power and blunt force. Antithetical to speed. It had nothing to do with forward momentum, everything to do with simple, I am here. Dancers among you, anyone? Dance? No? You get out more. You really have to. Even the ladies don't dance? No? I don't dance either, but, but, but I watch a lot of dance. Uh, I'm a, Norbert asked me yesterday on the way into the airport whether I cared about sports. And I explained to him that I don't care at all about sports, but I like theater. And one of the things I like about theater is dance. One of the things I like about dance is the expression of power, the expression of romance, the expression of love. And what happened in comics in the 1950s was the subtlety of the work that was done in the 40s disappeared, replaced by a, an expression of almost nothing but power. 
not even energy, but power. I think it explains why, for example, Jack Kirby became so popular an artist in the 1960s. Because Jack was not about speed, about forward momentum, he was simply about weight. Forms and shapes and ideas had weight. And I like the balletic nature of movement as opposed to the, the wrestlers who stamp and wait and, and stamp and, 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 and lay, lay down the ground. So for me, the Batmobile of the 1950s bores the living hell out of me. It's, it's simply blocking shape. nature of this material. It's why I love the work of Tim Sale. It's why I love the work of, of Donald Cook. You know, I, I consider myself a cartoonist in a sense less that I draw cartoons and that I write and draw my own material. Okay. These days, when I do the Batmobile, I don't draw it. I no longer draw the Batmobile. Because what I do today is I have a CGI model kit. 3D Max? Maya? No, of course. Yeah. So what's ha that, that's why this is blank. See, this, this represents the blankness of drawing. What's happened in my field? Look at that. Be happy, happy for the camera. Be thrilled to see me. There you go. All right, thank you very much. Um, it has become increasingly less and less necessary to draw everything. Those of us who begin to, to chip away at that accept the basic facts of life. Some years back, I did a World War One, a World War One aviation series, five issues, and in the course of the, of the, of the series, I had to draw six different biplanes. Are there artists among you? Anybody draw for a living? Okay. Let me tell you, drawing biplanes is a most unrewarding experience <laughs> because they make no sense geometrically. They are, they're, they are impossible to draw well. It's one of the reasons why I so deeply respect Joe Pugh. So, what I did was, I bought six of these aircraft. An albatross, an EH-7, a, 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 a South with camel, a spit, a, no, a, a whatever, a spad. Bought all these models. And I built wire frames. I drew on top of the wire frames. I then added texture and, and insignia to the wire frames. So they are a combination of drawing and, and models. The same is true with, 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 with any automobile. Those who object to this are missing the point of what we do. Because the truth is, what we do, for me, from my perspective, this is me speaking a lot, is the product is the end result. Not the picture, not the process. It is what we end up with that matters and counts. I don't believe that Carl Sagan once said that if you're going to make an apple pie really from scratch, you have to start at the beginning of the universe. And I believe and I respect that. My feeling is you use every tool that's handy to you and make, make maximum use of it. If I do the inside interior of the Batmobile, for example, the Batmobile 
that I did in that two part in, the, in that, that Batman Catwoman job I did a couple of years back was based on a 1985 Corvette Stingray. Okay, a model of that, which we then corrupted and rebuilt. Okay. It is functionally unnecessary today to start from scratch with the armature of drawing a car, an airplane, a city. You know? There are guys out there who are actually using a, a, a program called uh, Poser, where they don't even bother drawing figures anymore. See, I draw the line there. Because I feel that I'm drawing characters who act. And I find Poser characters don't act. But I also feel that for me to, to serve my client's needs, and that is my job. I work in a service business. I am a service-based based, based, based employee. I'm a, con I'm, I'm, I'm a corporation who provides services to another corporation. And the most efficient way for me to do that is to maximize the use of tools, 3D Max, Maya, SketchUp, everything. Because you are competing with others who do the same. So, for me to continue to draw from scratch is self-serving, smug, and ultimately counterintuitive and counterproductive. What have you done with 3D Max and Maya? What are you doing with it? Are you studying it or are you working with it? Uh-huh. For three for, for actually for, for characters, yes. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, for characters? Really? Okay. Is anyone else using using the CGI format material? Anybody? Any CGI artists here? Okay. See, I'm old. Alright? And this is not a joke, this is serious stuff. If I were 20 years younger than I am today, in the position I am in the field today, I would not work with paper at all. I would be completely Cintiq based. But for me, my career, I have, if I have five more years, I'm a lucky man. Ten, then I'm gone. It's true. You know, it's a, it's a boy's business. I'm older than most of the parents of my editors. <laughs> Keep laughing, but it's true. I mean, I'm, this, is not, this is not false modesty. This is simple reality. So that I guarantee that the guys who designed this car, they learned to work with Conti Crayon and with clay. But what they're working with today is the same program you're working with. Because you're competing in a real world. And my career is based on competition. Okay. I'm competing for other jobs with other people. I provide services which are very specific to me. But I also know that there are younger men out there who are better at what I do than I am. And the difference is I deliver it more on time, more, more, more consistently, more creatively. And the way I do that is not to insist on old school, not to insist that the old days were better, but to accept the fact that I live in the new days, and that I must compete by new days' terms and new days' troubles. Does that make sense? Okay. So what I've just done, to a certain extent, is to completely make it make unnecessary the drawings that I did in the beginning. Yes and no. Yes, because it's no longer necessary for me to even think about the kind of structure and design that one would go through building a car. No, because I believe you must start from somewhere else to use the mechanical tools that make it possible for us to do what we do. What we, what we do. For example, I used to draw biplanes without a mop, from by, by eye. The same with cars, the same with people. Okay. There are people out there, I don't know, I'm sure none of you, there are people out there who believe that artists should not use photographs, that they actually make everything up. These are delusional people. These are people who have absolutely no clue about what it takes to go into what I do. Okay. 
for me to make a living, and this is my job, it is my job, I have to do a minimum of a page a day. One page a day. Which is not, you know, I do it. I do more than one page. That's my minimum. All right. To do that, what I have to do every morning is sit down and figure out what is unnecessary today on this page. What can I not use? What can I not do and yet achieve the same effect and finished idea? Okay? In that regard, that's where CGI comes in. That's where you don't draw what you can trace, you don't trace what you can paste up. But what's left over, you draw the hell out of. Does that make sense? Questions? Ideas? Thoughts? Perspectives? Well, the question is, uh, what would you recommend the younger fellows how to start? Ah, you want to draw for a living? No. <laughs> yes. Not yet? Oh, you're gonna, you, but you're going to talk him into it one way or the other. Yeah. No, I'm not. Okay. He's interested, at least. Well, what I, what I would suggest you do is you start working from photographs. You use your eye. I learned, I learned how to draw. Mostly, as an adult, I mean, I, I, came, I came to the profession with some skills, but not very many. It wasn't until I'd gone to work for Neil Adams for a year, when Neil Adams took me and made me trace photographs and draw from the same photographs. What I learned from that experience was the difference between what I saw and what I traced. And I began to slowly make those two things come together. Okay? So, if you're going to start out, you trace pictures, and you begin to get a sense of how your eye and your memory has very little to do with what reality tells you. And your job is to have your eye and your memory catch up with that. And there are those of us out there, not me, there are lucky men who have eidetic memory. Okay? Michael Golden has an eidetic memory. Okay? Michael Golden, in my opinion, is the most important comic book artist to come into the comic book business in the past 40 years. He is profoundly influential. He's an astonishing draftsman. And he is blessed with an eidetic memory, which is what they used to call a photographic memory. You show Michael that car, he looks at the car, and he can draw the other side of it from memory tomorrow. <coughs> Help this man down the stairs with his luck. Like he sneaked through, he didn't even see you. <laughs> like, like little cat feet. Yeah. 